The recording will be housed on the Career Briefs website, and if you go to Career Briefs and click on the free resources link, you'll find all of the webinars that the Career Cafe has been presenting for your um, continuing education and training needs. So Nancy Galusian is our presenter again today, and she's with the California EDD, and she's an employment program representative. Nancy's been selected as a super trainer by her team, and she works on the common measures, managing reports, and veteran training um, work groups, as well as being a trainer on all different aspects of the Cal Jobs website, which is the portal that we're using through the Career Cafe. So I'm going to turn it over to Nancy right now. Let me get her microphone turned on. And... Hang on, bear with me for one second here, folks. Okay, Nancy, are you there? I'm here. Okay, so let me go ahead and change the presenter over. Nancy, you can go ahead and start sharing your screen with us. All right. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and um, welcome to our final series of the Find a Job Brown Bag webinars. Um, and just an overview of what we've done with all the other episodes. Um, as you can see on the screen here, our first episode, with it was basically what users can do without registering. Our second episode focused more on what you can do once you register. The third episode on employer services. Uh, the fourth one was the resume builder and the different ways that you can upload your resume or type a resume in. And today's um, uh, episode will go over how to assist an individual, um, which would be your student, and uh, just how to access the reports, which Kate just went over. And uh, we'll just do a little overview if we have time just to kind of go over things and how to get to certain places as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And as you all know, that by getting to CalJobs, which is the portal through Career Career Cafe. Once you log on to Career Cafe site, you would just go to the Jobs Apply, and um, once you scroll down, if you are already in Cal Jobs, you would just go straight to Sign Into Cal Jobs. And if your student was brand new to Cal Jobs, they would go to Register on Cal Jobs. I've said this before, and I'll just say it one more time, just to reiterate it. Um, there are a lot of people who have registered on Cal Jobs at one point, and they might not even know that they did or they forgot they did. And the reason for that is if anyone was um, on unemployment, then it's mandatory for them to register on Cal Jobs so that they can look for work and go back to work. So a lot of times, they um, someone might register on Cal Jobs while they're on unemployment, but if you know time passes and they never access the site after getting back into work or going to school, they might forget. So if you do come across someone who tries to register on Cal Jobs, or they tell you they tried to register on Cal Jobs, but um, they don't remember their password, of course, and if they're, the system will ask them if they want. Um, they, that the system will ask them for their email address so that the system could send them a temporary password. And just from experience, I know that that takes a while to get to them. I believe it's like 48 hours or so, and that's not too bad. But if the student really is trying to get on and you know wants to get onto the website, they could go into any of the ED offices or the, any of the one stops, and we as staff can go ahead and change the password and give them a new one. So um, just to put that out there, that that is available to them as opposed to waiting to get an email from Cal Jobs. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, sorry, let me go down here. So I'm going to go into sign into CalJobs so we can get to get our webinar going here. I thought I had one open, but I wasn't sure where. Oh, here we go. Wow. Okay, so here we are. I've already logged into CalJobs, and this is me logging in as a staff member. So this is how the staff member site looks. If you all remember, this is the dashboard. And the way you can tell the difference of a staff member logging in or if you're helping a student, right here what we call the left-hand navigation. Um, it'll be a different color for the student. It's, and I'll do that in a moment so you can see how it's a different color. But um, this is our dashboard. So remember these things are all called widgets and you can move them around. Once you start using the site more, you'll see what you like and what you don't want there. You can simply exit out and you won't have anything here if you wish not to have anything. 
So let's go ahead and jump into assisting a student. Um, and of course, the website, we use the term individual. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth saying individual and or student. So to get to the student, um, if they are already registered, you would go here to assist an individual. And under the general criteria, you would use any of the options um, that best fit whatever the student is giving you to look them up into CalJobs. The best way and the easiest way is just typing the full social security number. And that's because, um, you know, there's only one social security number designed for each person. So that way you won't get a whole list of people to go through, um, which you will experience if you use the last four digits. Um, and the date of birth. So the social security number is the best way. And you could do you know, a variety of things if you want to use it. A first name, last name, date of birth. There's different ways you could do it, and you don't need to do all of them. One will suffice in finding the person. I'm going to find myself. So um, I, the staff Nancy will be helping the job seeker Nancy out today. So um, because I remember my username, I'm going to type that in and then hit search. And then you'll see you'll get this um, menu here with your username, the first name, the last name, the last for their social. And then that way you can verify who the person is. If you had a lot more people listed here, then you, the, you have to look at each options that are listed to make sure you get to the right person. And how you access their information or their profile, you would go to their username and select the link under their username. Or under the action items column here, you would select any of these links as well to get to their profile. So I'm going to click my username and get to the profile. And once again, this is our um, portfolios here. So typically, you're going to see it like this. And I just want to show how it looks because it sounds so silly. but it, sometimes it's a difference when you log in and it's like this, and then you forget all the different um, folders here. So make sure you expand everything just so you get a full view of all the um, menus that you have to choose from. There you go. So um, this is the menu, the whole portfolio, and we'll spend some more time on going through this today. So, you know, as a staff, you'll be assisting the individual in different ways. And the good thing about CalJobs is that it keeps a record of everything. So I'm going to go here under staff's profile. And I'm going to go to my case notes. And case notes are notes that you as a staff member can enter about the students that you're working with. Let's say they told you they're going to be moving out of um, the state for a little bit. They're going to take time off of school. They're going to go back to work full time. Whatever it may be, um, any case note you add, it will stay in the system forever. It won't ever get deleted. So you can see here there's a few case notes and it's um, in a date order. Um, and let's just go ahead and these were done actually when we changed our system. So I'm curious to see what case notes these are. So let's just go ahead and click one. It says assessment. And it shows the date when it was created and I was the one that created it. Uh, for myself, gave client an assessment of law. Okay, that's because we were doing it for training purposes. Wow. Um, so we just had to create something just to see how it would look. So of course you'd want to record a better case note, but just to show you how the process is, um, let's go ahead and add a new case note for our student here. So let's go to add a new case note. There are some templates in the system that you can use. And you'll see it here. Um, so if you want to do that, you can do that as well. You would write the contact date because it is a mandatory field, as we hear with, see here with the red asterisk. Let's put today's date. The program, what program they're in. And to be honest, you might see more options when you actually um, get to this portion. Uh, sometimes based on your login information, you're going to have more access to things or less access. And based on what partner agency you are, um, you might see a host of things under programs. These are all programs that my office that we use. So that's why you see these programs here. And then you select your region that you belong to. Now you'll see here it shows me all the community colleges. So you would select you know, whichever community college you belong to. 
and there's a whole bunch. So you would choose whichever one you belong to. That's my region that I belong to. And then you would select your office location. You can write in a little subject line so that you remember, you know, what it was about. Um, if you want to be more organized, you can go ahead and do the contact type. That way there's more information about the case note you're putting in there, but it's not mandatory, so you can leave it as is. So let's go ahead and write in a case note. Patient interest in moving to whatever it may be. And then you hit save. And you'll see it here pop up as the most recent case note. So that's a really good feature in kind of tracking information on the student. And so if you have weekly meetings, biweekly meetings, whatever it may be, um, if you're more like case managing them, uh, you could add more information about them so that you can see where the student, that, where they currently are, what needs to be done, if there's any missing information. Let's go to the summary view here. The summary will just give you a little bit about, um, a, a little blurb about the, the student or the individual that you're working with. And it's a good place to start um, at whenever you're assisting them to see if there's any changes that you need to make. Uh, let's say at one time when they uh, registered for Cal Jobs, they were not attending school, but now they are. So you might want to go back into their profile and change that. It doesn't make a difference if they're going to school, if you change it, if not. If you change it or if you leave it as is, it doesn't make a difference. It's just good to have accurate information. So that's under their uh, profile here. And if you do need to make a change, you would go to their general information. And this gives you all their information. Um, their username their address, mailing address, phone numbers, their email address. And the more accurate it is, the easier it is if you ever need to, you know, so that you don't have so many different places where you keep everything. The good thing about the system is you can always access it to find information, pertinent information, uh, and getting in contact um, with your student. So there you go, that's their general information. Okay, there you go. Some other ways we can assist students. Um, give me a second here, and I'm going to show you what I was discussing earlier, how to know. You'll see here on the left-hand navigation, it says currently managing, and it'll show you the student you're working with. So whenever you are currently assisting someone, it'll see you under this box. And the benefit of that is, Anything you are doing while assisting that student, the system makes um, a little record of that. So it makes a little note of that. And as I was mentioning, depending on your access, um, you'll see certain things. When I log into CalJobs through the Career Cafe, I have less options to look at here. Um, when I log into CalJobs through CalJobs, the website that we use, you know, I have more um, to access from my portfolio. So I'm going to go back and forth just to show you a few things um, that we can see as well. But going back to the currently managing, I'll show you whenever you're assisting someone because the system will make any kind of record, any kind of notation whenever you do something major with the student. Let's say you're working with them and finding a job and you apply for the job while you're helping them, you guys both apply for the job. The system will record that in the system, um, in the services, so that way it's kind of keeping track of everything the student is doing, which they, the student, can also view at a later time when they go in their profile. They can see everything that has been done as well. So it keeps it very organized for both uh, you know, staff and the user to kind of keep track of what has been um, done in their profile. So what we're seeing here on the left-hand navigation is our profile as a staff 
even when we're assisting a student. But when I scroll down and, um, sorry, I made a mistake, where it says my workspace, for us, for when I log into CalJobs, when you're assisting a student, the colors change. So that way it's a good way to track your, your what, what, um, who you're helping. And I'll show you just how it looks on our end. But well, whenever you see a duplication of the my workspace, let me go up, see over here it says my staff workspace. So that those are your features and those are your options. When we scroll down just a little bit, a little bit more, and it says my workspace, that is what the student sees. So when I select that, as you notice, our page here completely changed, and those are all the features of the student, which if you guys remember from our last episode, we kind of worked a lot from this menu option, um, and when we we're doing the resume and when we have done the virtual recruiter, this is how the, the student's home page looks. So it is a little different. You'll notice they have a little services preview over here where they can get to their information, and then their widgets are down here a little um, below their services preview. So the My Calendar, um, as a staff member, if you have any workshops that are coming up, um, any job fairs, a career fair, a resource fair, it's something that you can record in the system and you can have them, you could sign a student up as well. That's another way that we can assist um, our, our individual students. You'll see here um, under schedules, there's an events calendar. And let me preface by saying once again, once you are using the system and you know the access and the permissions and what parameters you are to use the system with, you might not even use the events calendar. But just so that you know it's there and what it can actually do might be good for you later on. You might not even use it, which is fine. But um, let's say what we use it for in my office, whenever we have a workshop, whenever we have a job fair, um, we have these things called a targeted recruitment, which is just like a job fair, but it's just one employer coming into our office to hire people, um, and that's called a targeted recruitment. We go ahead and schedule those um, in our calendar here, and the benefit of that is we like to sign people up in advance, so that way we keep track of how many people are showing up to our events, and then um, once uh, once an individual comes and attends that program, that workshop, that job fair, uh, and you select attend it, it records a service on their profile. Now, if they don't attend, it does not make any kind of, um, it doesn't have any kind of negative doing in the system. Even in, let's say, your student is on unemployment and they don't show up for something, it doesn't affect the system in any way, so don't get worried about that if you are. The only time um, Anything makes a, um, anything can make a change is if the appointment and it's with us um, with ED if it's an unemployment mandatory appointment. But I'm not going to get all into that because I don't want to confuse anyone. But like I said, so you can create a schedule for yourself about a workshop or a resource fair, a job fair, um, you know, something that you have going on maybe uh, during like a common break time and you want to sign up some students, you can use the events calendar here and sign them up. And another feature that's good for that is that um, if you have it available for others to see, uh, you know, if let's say you work, uh, let's say I'm going to use my area that I work in. Let's say uh, I have an event at GCC and I work a lot with PCC. I could have my event open up so that PCC can also sign people up as well. If I'm working with a, um, you know, closely with another staff member from Pasadena City College, then that way we can, you know, maximize our efforts and sign more students up for something. So the way you would do that is, um, let me go down here. You would select your office. And just so you see how it looks when you, so you select your LWIA and your region. Then you'll select your office location. Might be different when you select your community college, and they'll give you another, um, another option to choose from. And then you'll see under the event categories, these are all the event categories that the system knows that we use 
whether, um, and these are some of the stuff that we EDV use, so it might be different once you are actually using the system and what the permissions that you have with your login information, you might see different things here. So, um, but for sure, like something like a job fair, a workshop, let's go ahead and, and schedule one just so you see how, oh, well, let me filter one, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and filter so you see how it looks when you filter the events and I'll show you everything that has been scheduled for the month of November in the region of Vertigo Workforce in the office of Glendale. Because that might take a while, let's do this. What happened? Where do you go? Glendale. And let's just do workshop. Hopefully the process time won't take longer. And why? That's odd. It's telling me no events are found when I know, in fact, uh, we do have a bunch of events right now. I'll go in through CowDrop to see if that makes a difference right now. But that's how you would access a event. So, and you could sign your students up. And I'll show you how the whole schedule looks. I apologize. I'm not sure why it's not showing up on this section. But it really should. There shouldn't be no difference in going in this way. If you want to add an event, Let's just do one for, to see how that looks. You go to Add Event, and once again, you'll get the same drop-down menu. Let's just say Workshop. Um, let's say Shop Fair. Give it a title. If you want to put in a description, you can do that. If there's a certain class size, and that's more so if you're doing a workshop, if you want to keep it to a limitation so that you don't have too many people showing up, you'll do that. And then once it reaches the number, the event will close so that you can't add more people. If it's something that's like a career fair or resource fair, obviously you would need to really do a size because it can come and go. You would leave it as recurring one time, the start of the event, let's say 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. Once again, you would select your community college that you belong to. The event location, if it's on site, once you hit on site, um, once you select the copy address information from the drop down and select on site, the system will generate your address for you because it has in the system. If there's any corrections, you can go ahead and do that, but there shouldn't be. If there's a moderator, so a moderator would be the person to contact, you would go ahead and fill that information out as well. And the hidden event is if you don't want others to see it, you would have it as a hidden event. Um, that way, no other, um, there's nobody else can access the event. If you want to track services for the event, that's what I was mentioning. Um, when you have a list of people who are showing up and you select attended for them after the event is over, if you say yes, track services, then you would select from this menu here and then Cal Jobs will record a service for them, like they came in for an orientation, they came in for a workshop, whatever it is, it'll record in that person's profile. So you'd select whatever you want, and once you hit save, it'll show up. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to create a false um, workshop here, but I'll show you how it'll look in just a moment. So that's another way to assist um, students with, so we look at a case note. We looked at just now how to create an event and how to um, schedule them. I'll show you that in a second. So those are the main ways to assist a student other than what we discussed in our previous um, webinar about finding a job and the resume, which we can still do from this section here. Last episode when we did the resume builder, I had logged in as a student. 
um, but if you log it as a staff and assist your student, like we are doing here, you can do the same thing that we did last week and get to the resume profile. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my mouse was going a little crazy. You would go to the resume profile. And then you would see what resumes they have in the system. And if you want to create another one, you would create a new resume. And this would be with your assistance. So you'll be creating a resume. It makes no difference if you assist them, like if you're currently managing them and a student decides to take over at this point and do it. It makes no difference which way um, you help them out, if you just tell them to log in on their own or if you log in and, and then assist them. It's the same thing, really. Um, you'll just notice, like I, we're discussing, that the home page and the portfolios are different. When a student logs in, they don't see these portfolios. You only see it when it's a staff member that logs in. Um, and then, once again, just to go over, if there's any job, job applications that they want to kind of have a mock copy of, which we had done as well, you can go ahead and do that with them. Another way to assist a student. This is how the application looks once you fill it out with them. Um, and if I'm saying this and maybe you didn't attend the third episode, it was in the third episode where we discussed how, or I'm sorry, it was in the second episode where we discussed how to have a, like a, a mock um, application or like a, a reference application so that when the student goes out and is applying for a job, um, they can have this as a reference while they are applying for jobs just to know what to put down on the application, which is a really good feature that, you know, we can have this as well for those who, you know, in case that there's people that still have paper applications or even when you're doing an online resume, you still have a point of reference to go back and forth with and it's all their information. Uh, the virtual recruiter, which we discussed as well, um, which was the system basically looking for work for the student, and you can do it on a variety of different industries that the student is interested in, and the system will generate a run and notify the student of any new jobs in that field, whether they want the run to be done weekly or biweekly. So that was the virtual recruiter. and. Um, just so that we, I'm going to go over um, what we've discussed, and in case while I'm saying it, if there's any questions, since this is a last um, webinar, you know, feel free to get the questions to me, and then we can kind of go over it. I want to give some time for that. So let's go over our left-hand navigation. I'm going to go ahead and release the student I'm working with. Whenever you're done assisting the student, go ahead and release them, and you have to release them before you assist a new student anyways. So it's just good practice to always release a student whenever you're done assisting them with whatever it is. Um, so then we come back here to My Staff Workspace. This is your dashboard, your My Staff account, and the directory of services. So this is the first portion of the My uh, Left Hand Navigation. We've discussed um, the man Manage Individuals. You go to create an individual if you're going to assist a student in um, assist a student in registering for Cal Jobs for the first time. If they're already uh, registered on, on Cal Jobs, like we just did, you would go to assist an individual and um, find the student on Cal Jobs through a variety of ways. In episode three, we discuss employer services. So the same way you would create um, a student for the first time, you could create an employer for the first time. You could assist the employer if they have a job order open or if they're looking for, um, for people to fill their position. You would go to assist an employer and do a resume search. The employer access rights is something that we don't really use. Employers posting jobs, that's a faster way to get to the job portion um, in helping the employer out. Manage resumes, we've discussed last um, webinar, how to create a resume, uh, search for resumes. You can also match resumes to a job and do a candidate referral. 
the manage job orders, how to create a job order, or how to look for jobs. The labor exchange, that's doing more referrals. Um, we can go over that, but that's when you have basically a job, and a, if let's say um, Macy's calls you and tells you they're looking for a sales associate, you put the job order in, and then you want to find, you know, somebody else to refer the job to and you know the person you have in mind, you can find them that way and, and refer the job, refer the candidate to the job order. The reports, uh, this is how you would access the reports which Kate went over in the slide when we first got started. Um, there are certain community college reports. Once you go to reports, community college, when I go from here, it won't even show me the different reports, but I'll log in through CalJobs just so you see there are three different reports, three different fields, or three different sections for the uh, community college reports. So that's how you get to the report section. There's a summary of reports, too, um, on trends. We use a lot of our reports for our case manage programs to see how many new clients we've had in our program, how many have successfully completed the program, meaning they went back to work. So that's what we really use our reports for. We've gone over the communication with the messages, the correspondence, um, which was creating a cover letter as well for students, the virtual recruiter we've done for both the employer side, where the employer could do a search on new candidates in the system uh, for resumes, and the virtual recruiter from the job seeker side, which is finding new jobs. The system will run a search. These skill set templates, um, which goes with the communication template as well with the cover letter template that the system has generated for you, or case note templates, which is a good way that we are just discussing on how to keep track of your work with the student. The appointments calendar and the events calendar. The events calendar will be where you will access um, any events that are taking place within the month or if you want to create a new event. Um, and lastly, the assistance center. I'm going to access that to show you. And it's really great information. Anything basically on the site you can find online as well. I know we've had these webinars and you can always use a webinar as a point of reference because I know that they're stored for you to access as well. But um, once you actually start using the system, uh, CalJobs has already designed a bunch of how-to guides basically on how, if you get stuck somewhere, on what to do next. So I hope I didn't do that too fast. Uh, what I went, I just went down here to other staff services and staff online resources. So the user guide for individuals, user guide for employers, and user guide for staff. These are the how-to guides. So in the three sections, there's a how-to guide for each. Let's look at the user guide for staff real quick. Why are you not found? Hmm. Give me a second here. This is um, how CalJobs looks. So you can get into CalJobs through the Career Cafe side or through CalJobs. Uh, of course, the both ways get you the same results. You can find the same jobs on both ends. There's no difference on that end. Um, but um, I'm not sure why it wasn't showing me the staff online resources through the Career Cafe. A lot of times you'll notice that there's random glitches that you experience for really no reason. Because from here, I was able to get the user guide for individuals. And it's loading here for us. So this is like a thick manual on the user guide. I don't really think anyone wants to spend too much time reading it. But if you feel inclined to really get a thorough understanding of Cal jobs, uh, the background information, you can take some time and read this whole uh, manual just on the individual. There, and there's a good section for the staff as well. And like I said, once you start using the system more, you'll you know understand what your purpose is for using the system. And we had to go through this manual several times um, when we first updated the system because there were so many 
differences with our old system and when you record something it does something else so we had to read this manual and can't say it's the you know best book to read here but it is very thorough and there's a lot of your questions can get answered through this and you could definitely just do it by the section that you're interested in so that's the manual let me get to the how-to guides so the bottom part of the other staff services let's go to staff online courseware the learning center I think we've just showed this before also um, these are like the videos on how to access the videos and um, there are little clips on on these sections here so general courses the staff courses I'll show you a mini video on whatever the topic is in the blue link so the background wizard so let's say you begin an assisting your student and you might forget on how to what the next step is it'll show you how to create an individual step-by-step -step on how to use a background wizard the resume builder how to find a job so the system has done a good job in providing a lot of um, help if you do get stuck. Nancy? So I'm going to go to the quick, yes. Yeah, so while you're talking about needing help, one of the people on the webinar today has written in that she's been unable to create her login name. It keeps giving her an error message saying that it's not appropriate, the login name that she's chosen. And she's done everything from as simple as her first initial and last name, and then she did her first initial and last name and added some numerical digits after it. And then she tried a very, what what looked to me like a very strong password more than a login name. And it still says, no matter what she tries, the message that she gets back is not appropriate. That That's is strange. Um, so is this her creating it as, let's say, like as an individual to, like as a user or as a staff? I don't know. And let me see if um, she's saying as a user. As a user. Okay. Um, I can help her with that, but um, um, if she feels comfortable, I can, if she, we could either, once the webinar is done, we can all just say, on, like, we can say on the call, or I, you can give her my number to call me, and then I could walk her through it and do it on my end. Um, I just don't want to do it right now because it would be more personal information I have to ask for her. If she feels comfortable, she, we can do it together. If not, um, I would suggest she can, just like how a student can go into our offices, she could come into one of our offices, and she can indicate that she's, you know, through one of the community colleges, and she's trying to access this website as a, as a user, but she's not able to, and they can help her as well. So give her those options, and whatever she feels comfortable with, we, we can figure out what's happening. Okay. All right. I will let her know that, and I will get her your phone number and email address. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. I didn't mean to interrupt what you were doing, but just since you were talking about needing help, I thought it was an appropriate <laughs> question, so I'll yeah, let you take fine. it back. Thanks. Thank you. So, um... Where we're at right now, uh, through the other staff services, the Assistance Center, um, these are the, the quick reference cards are the how-to cards. So you'll go to the quick reference cards, and once again, it's into three sections, individual, employer, and staff. And let's just take a look at the staff how-to card. And it's a very, you know, step-by-step -step, um, quick reference card for a staff user. And it'll show you how to use the left-hand navigation, the My Staff Workspace, services for workforce staff, the reports on just what the different titles are and what they mean, the schedules, how to use the event calendar, the appointment center, the messages. It kind of does a, a little definition of each one. So and then it shows you. Um, the important things you can do for employers in VOSS. So VOSS, you'll hear the term VOSS a lot. VOSS is virtual one-stop, and that's basically CalJobs. Um, the new CalJobs is, um, there's another program called VOSS. So VOSS and CalJobs kind of merged a little bit, and so the, the background or the thought process of the new CalJobs is using what VOSS 
was using. So VOS is virtual one stop, which is just like CalDrops. So I'll show you what you can do with an employer, how to um, assist an employer, how to view, or view their history, their employer access rights, how to merge any accounts. And then what you can do for individuals, which is the students. Um, so you might really want to use this once you're actually using the site. When Just a recommendation, when we first went live, we had these all printed out for all of our staff. And just in case you get stuck at a moment and you don't know where to go, we had this printed out and people had it by their desk for the first few days when we were going live, uh, just to kind of have um, a reference back to. So this might be beneficial at that time. Or just know that it's there, so if you do ever get stuck on something, it's all here for you. And since it does split up for the individual as well, if you want to give this to your student while they're using the system, it might be good for them to use as well so that they don't get stuck or frustrated, as a lot of people do when sometimes they're using um, you know, a computer or the internet. Um, they might get more frustrated at times, is what we experience, at least with our clients. So the more assistance and the more stuff we can give them to help them out it might help out while they're registering or trying to look for a job or their LMI information. Um, and that is really it, you know, just going through the overview, we've covered a lot of information and um, I know it's been kind of fast and like little portions of it. But um, I hope it's been beneficial for you so that when you do start using the system a lot more, you'll remember some of the things we've discussed. And, you know, keep in mind a lot of stuff changes. You might see new, part, uh, new, new entries on CalJobs one week that you didn't see the week before. It happens. The system is still um, getting updated very soon as well. We are, our WIA, our partners with Workforce Investment, um, they are... Their, their system is going to be connected with our system soon, so you'll be affected by just seeing different options as well. So just keep in mind that happens a lot. Um, and other than that, I really want to open up now. If there are any questions you can go over, if you want to see something again, uh, we can do another run through of something. And just let me know if there's anything you want to discuss. Okay, Nancy, this has been so exciting, and I loved your little comment before about sometimes computers just glitch randomly. We don't understand why, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so the big thing whenever we're using these exactly. systems, and the bigger the system, the more you have to remember that just to be patient, and sometimes you just have to try again. So um, I also, I don't really have any other questions. Somebody wanted to know about how they could print some of the information, but you got to that anyway by showing us those great guides that are available. Some of us who are a little bit more old school still uh, like to be able to have a manual that we can physically refer to. So that's a really useful tool. So thanks for pointing that out. That's great. And for showing us again where all the videos are. So I'm not seeing, um, so looks like somebody saying that they do. Okay, so um, that's, there's some questions coming in now. So to assist students, do I need to sign up as a site administrator and create a staff account? Um, I don't know about the site administrator. Um, for for us, um, we were we all had our access information. Our department gave us our usernames and our passwords. So that's how, based on your login information, basically your username as a staff member. That's how the system recognizes what permissions you're going to have and what you're going to see, basically. So that was not something that we. Um, if you're a staff member and trying to access as a staff, that's usually, it's not something that you create on your own. It's given to you by, I'm not sure, like the appropriate um, hierarchy with the community colleges, but it's given to you by your manager or whoever is in charge will give you the staff information. But in order to assist the individual, like what we were doing before, where it shows currently managing Nancy, which would be your student, yeah, you would have to be logged in as a staff and assist the student. 
Okay, Susan, I, I think Susan Coleman's on. I'm going to try to, Susan, I unmuted your microphone. Can you help us with what the different levels are that if somebody is a site administrator, what they're accessing differently than just being logged in as a user? Um, well, then they have access to their student uh, files. Uh, they have access to help their students. Um, okay. You know, all, all of the things uh, that are over there on that one side, I can't see them now. Um, but that staff can do, so they can help their students, they can um, see the reports. Uh, that's why we want, would like to have at least one person at each college uh, be registered as a staff member. Okay, all right, and I'm seeing Susan just typed in an answer too, saying yes, they have to send us the information and we're going to set them up as staff. So thanks Susan right. for chiming in, thanks, I appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remute you now, so thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, hopefully that answers the question there for um, Audrey, who was asking about being a site administrator. So if you if you choose to be the site administrator at your college, you will have access to more of the tools um, to make it a more powerful tool for you to be able to help your students in their search for employment. Uh, Joni, list of previous webinars I don't have as a specific list, but I can. If you look at the free resources page on Career Briefs, you can see all the webinars there, um, and I can try to put together a list, but and get that out to everybody sometime next week. And let's see, um, Rosie's question: Can you also ask how successful are students in navigating this themselves? It seems like there are a lot of layers on the site, and students don't spend that much time digging on a website. What do you think, Nancy? Yeah, you hit the nail. You know, a lot of people uh, they see the site, but they don't know all the functions of each area and that's where where our help comes in is by letting them know that they can research some more labor market information and then the benefit of labor market information it might be the first time you know the younger the individual might be it might be the first time they're even hearing labor market information you know I can't it's hard for me to say on the student side I could just say on the clients that we see which is a variety of age groups you know um, that it just it's usually someone who is um, is really actively seeking work and is really, you know, focused on getting a career. They know a lot about the labor market information, so those people are good. Our our area in helping people are the ones that have no idea what um, labor market trends are, you know. So that and yeah, the system is kind of overwhelming for someone because they just use it for the resume and that's it. But then when you take the time to actually help them and explain to them some of the features, uh, then they use it a little more. Um, I can say with our our old system to this system, we actually see a lot more people coming in and spending more time using the system, and they seem to really enjoy it. At first, they were frustrated because if they saw the old system, they were expecting to see it again. You know, so that change was a big deal for a lot of our our clients that use Cal Jobs every day. But um, I all the feedback from a lot of people once they kind of play around with it and it takes time, and if they give it the time, they truly enjoy it because there's a lot of features that you know it's all like it's like a one stop place for everything that you need and it's just the the hard part is getting relaying the information to them as to what they can do with Cal jobs so it kind of it goes both ways you know it's it's frustrating for some and some don't even care about everything that's on the site they just want to get to the resume and look for jobs they don't even touch anything else and that's fine but it's really us educating them and that's when we make a difference in explaining well, wait a second. Look at what this new system feature is, and but so it's it's kind of it, it it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you, and that kind of um, goes back to Susan's also responding to that question as well, Nancy, and saying that, um, yeah, we do understand the complexity of the system, so for all of you folks out there at the colleges, um, what do you think, what additional information would you like to have that could help you then help your students use this resource? So, because it is a complex system, but anything that's going to have the power that this has is going to have some levels of complexity to it, so what can we do to help you be more successful? Um, Susan and I chat this morning and then um, Nancy and I also had a conversation about how we can once we have more site administrators actually signed up how we can create some more specific um, 
webinars or one-on-one, uh, -on -one, not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but face-to-face -face group training sessions for people in a specific region. So, um, so please, if you have any ideas or you've run into situations or you think you have some ideas of what additional training would work to help you and your students or training for your students, please let us know. Um, Nancy Susan Coleman's chiming in saying, thank you, Nancy, for a great webinar series. And I have to agree with her. It has been really wonderful. You've done a great job presenting and looking forward to working with you on other opportunities in the future. Thank you so much. I, it was a pleasure working with you both as well. All right, great. Well, I'm going to sign off then. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us and look for some more exciting webinars coming up in the future. Have a great day, folks.